to me, there's a, there's a creativity in photographing musicians at the best of times. But when you're actually when they're coming together to make music for such a good purpose, to sort of break down barriers and to to try and I suppose to break some of the unknowns, because I think one of the reasons different religions and different people they fall into the trap of prejudice through lack of knowledge. And so if the, by the very purpose of simply being together and making music together, they as a group will come to know that they're all nice, decent people thrive, striving for good things in the world. But also I hope, presumably, through their followers and the, the people in their different religions will see the same thing, that, oh, they're not, <laughs> they're not the enemy. <laughs> they are indeed brethren and people, and they do all want the same thing. So the, the very purpose of you guys all coming together um, works for me. And then the, the, to be able to creatively do it visually is just a bonus. It's always troubled me that one person trying to do good in the world and um, taking their version of spirituality and fellow man and morality could look at the person in the same street or the same school or the same country and argue that because the book they're referring to, because one's called the Bible and one's called the Quran, or whatever version of that you take, it, it seems, from, from the word go, studying this, it seemed to me odd that one group should be right and one should be wrong. Wholly so. I mean, now clearly if you are a priest or a rabbi or in one, then you do believe that one to be right. But I think from the outside, it's it's less clear, and I, and I think it, it's always seemed odd to me that people were so hostile to each other, when in a sense they're all trying to to seek the truth. Um, and given from my perspective, from the philo philosophical perspective, arguably no one's quite found the whole truth. It seems wise to listen to what each other are saying. It's funny because I, I I don't think it is. It's not quite. It's almost the reverse. You don't actually see into the soul, but a good photograph cuts through the barriers to seeing into the soul, if that makes any sense. So it's not that you actually ever see the soul, but what a good photograph does is cut away the protection and the barriers that people put up. So if people, one of my favourite things if I take a good portrait is when people, often the subject themselves, go, that, you, you have captured me. Or, or in, like the actor Tom Courtney um, sent me a lovely note saying it's the first time in my 50 year acting career that my wife has ever seen a photo of me that she thought she liked and was me and that's to me it's not the soul I've seen but what I haven't seen is the tricks and the, the barriers that people instinct I put them up, everyone puts them up so what I'm after is something close to the soul but it's, sort of, it's a reflection of the real person so, so that's the first half of that question but the other bit about musicians I think musicians are particularly interesting to, mostly I photograph actors Politicians and musicians. Those are mostly, those are the three areas I do. Um, politicians have a, a set repertoire of things they'll do, and it's quite a narrow repertoire, and it kind of looks like that. Um, and you, get a, you can get a good picture of them, and I think my picture of David Cameron or Tony Blair is better than the other person's, but I would. But actors, you'd think, would be really good at this, but actors are different because they will go. Um, so the first thing that goes, who do you want me to be? And I, to which my answer would be yourself. They go, whoa, wait a minute. Uh, I don't know how to do that. James Bond, I can do that. Um, but so actors actually, I find harder to get to be themselves than than anyone. So at least at least a politician gives me a version of themselves. Actors, I can't even get that. Um, that's not entirely true, but the actors who I know and love will forgive me for saying that. But musicians is where it gets really interesting because here is a bunch of people who understand creativity but unlike most creative artists they also understand marketing and commerce and they do understand that if they've written a great song it would be really helpful to have a photograph of them swinging from the lampshade or standing on the top of a car. Now normally I'm fighting to get people to do something interesting but with musicians you sometimes have to calm them down and go, do you know what? Just your head and shoulders would be fine. But th that actually creates a really creative... Um, and this, there, are, there are people who break the rules. In order. Al Pacino is fantastic because he doesn't... 
the actor stuff doesn't apply to him. He'll, he's more like a musician, and there are musicians who are actually more like actors. So that you can go all ways. But um, I think one of my favourites was Jack White of the White Stripes because he just he has a reputation for being very. He knows what he likes and he knows what he wants, and he's a genius by all accounts. And so I was sort of warned that I think I, I think I said to one of the people my ideas for shooting with Jack White, and they said, <laughs> "Good luck." And then I went in thinking, oh, here we go, nothing's going to happen. But of course, because Jack does understand the creative process, and because he is, it was just the most creative interaction. And that's when I love photography. If I go in with an idea of how to shoot you, or the artist, or whoever, it will invariably be wrong. But if I go in with no idea, but I meet the person, and we work out how best to do it, that's my idea of a creative and fun session. Well, I photographed him many times, and, um, and I've been in their home, and I've met the family, and I know... Cherie and the, I met the kids and the mother-in-law and I, I'm in a book club and we read the A Journey, his new book and one of the questions somebody said to me at the time is a bit similar but if you if I can digress for a second they said you you know Tony Blair you've met Tony what is the person we're reading in the book the same person and the answer is the, the person you see on telly the person you see in Downing Street the person you see around his kitchen table and the person you read about in the book is the same person. And so the notion that he is somehow an actor is so far from the truth that it's quite funny to hear people say that, I think. Um, I mean, I could, go, I could go on and on about this, but the, he, the misreading of Tony Blair is... It's off the scale, I think. I mean, this is setting aside one's view of Iraq, which is clearly a huge issue, whichever side you're on. The way that he's been coloured into every other aspect of his... Ten years as prime minister is just—I think it's extraordinary. But, but you see, I think I, I, it is in, I, it's, oh, it's absolutely genuine. But so, so is almost everything else about him. That's the bit that no one believes, and it's odd being in my position because you—I just find myself sitting across dinner table after dinner table in chattering classes where you, where you sort of see the mention of the word and you see the temperature rise and the people seething and you think, but. Have you talked to him? Have you actually have you read the book? Have you and, and if you do any of these things, it just the, the version, the the shorthand, the, the soundbite version of Tony Blair just bears no relation to the person. Uh, and, and again, it's all sorts of deep water here, but I think it's very interesting to read the book from my perspective versus somebody who's just coming in and reading the book from a position of hate, for want of a better word, and they still manage to find stuff in it that's. Um, although it's interesting in my book group where I think only one person voted Labour, how well the book went down. I will stay with you till the storm clouds fade away. Um, Jeff Chegwin has been an extraordinary and, and tower of creative strength for me right from the beginning of my career where he was involved in the 2004 exhibition Face the Music. And the thing I love about Jeff more than anyone in the, the business we call show is the lateral thinking and the 100% integrity and goodwill is fantastic. And Nick, I've just worked with musically on many of his acts and just another complete gentleman and joy. So if, if Nick and Jeff ask you to do something, you just say yes, because you know it'll be nice.